Hi lovers, I'm Nos Adorable and I welcome you back to Living LD with Nos Adorable. I hope you all are doing fine. In today's video, I'll be talking about patient's bill of rights. It is an important, it's one of an, uh, one of the important aspects of uh, our health care and um, I just felt that we need to be aware of our rights as a patient. When you go to a hospital as a patient, you have some rights that must be that must not be tampered with. Do you understand? So in today's video, I'll be taking you through the bill of rights as a patient, patient's bill of rights. So if you are new on this channel or you have been watching this video, you have been watching my video for a while and you are yet to subscribe to my channel, what are you still waiting for? Kindly help my channel to grow by clicking on the red subscribe button just down below. And um, yes, that's just, it means you are subscribed. Yes, it's just as simple as that. Thank you as you do so. And to my subscribers, thank you all. I appreciate and love you all. Thank you. So just as I was saying, that you may be wondering that um, what do I mean by patient bill of rights? Yes, I mean patient bill of rights. As a patient in a healthcare facility, you must uh, you have some um, bill of rights that must not be compromised. Those bill of rights must not be compromised as uh, we healthcare professionals as we take care of you, as we help you through your illness stages and bringing you back to health. So. Can you stay tuned to the end of this video because you might learn one or two things in today's video. Patient Bill of Rights means the guarantee for anyone who seek, um, who seek a medical care in the hospital or let's say in the healthcare facility. Do you think knowing your Bill of Rights as a patient or a patient relative to a helpless patient? I don't think you understand that. And let me just believe you understand that as a patient, do you know your patient's bill of rights or as a patient's relative? For example, to a helpless patient, you know, there are times that we have our patients that they cannot talk, you know, maybe they are unconscious. So, in such cases, we have the patient's relative standing in for them, taking um, decisions, taking some decisions for them. Do you understand? So, that makes you that makes every one of us to be to, to see the importance, yes, to see the importance of knowing our bill of rights as a patient. If you're a pregnant woman and you're in the hospital to give birth to your baby, yeah, you are a patient as of that time, you have some bill of rights. Yes, you have some rights that must not be tampered with while you are receiving your care in that healthcare facility. So many, your children, your babies, you know, in as much they are in that healthcare facility to receive treatment, they have rights. Every patient has their own bill of rights. So that is what we're going to be talking on today briefly. So please, just as I was can watch this video till the end. Um, um, when your bill of rights as a patient, it helps the patient to feel more confident. So I'm just talking about the reasons why you need to know your bill of rights as a patient or a patient relative to a helpless patient. It helps you to be more confident in the healthcare system. You know, when you know that, okay, this is my, this is my right, and you see the healthcare providers, you know, putting, taking your, those rights into consideration, observing those rights as they're giving, your, they're giving you care or giving your, your um, relative in uh, the care. You know, you'll be confident in that healthcare facility that, yes, you are not in the wrong place. It means that you are in the right healthcare facility. Then it assures you that the healthcare system is fair and they work to meet your need as a patient. You know, it means that when, when, when they are observing all those rights, when they are putting those rights into consideration, it, it, it convinces you. It convinces you that you are in the right place, just as I said before. And um, it assures you that they are doing their best to meet the need of you as a patient or as your, uh, to meet the need of your relative. Who is their patient? So it also encourages patients to take an active role in staying or getting LD. When I get to one of the patients' bill of rights, I'm going to dwell more on this on this uh, importance. It also encourages let me say it once it encourages patients to be active in staying or getting LD. So quickly, let's go through some of the patients' bill of rights. If you are enjoying this video, please don't um, forget to give it a thumb up. Yeah, a thumb up, and also subscribe to my channel. Please help my channel to grow, please. Thank you. So the first right I'm going to talk about is the right to timely access to details and accurate medical records and available services. This point means that you have the right to obtain your medical record. You know, there are times that um, we, have, um, we have some tests to do in the laboratory, um, one, two, three tests to do in the laboratory. When we do one or two tests in the laboratory, or maybe a hair spray, CT scan, you know, we have the right to all the records, to those records, to those uh, uh, medical records. We can ask our, our healthcare providers to allow us to see. Probably you have a relative who is not around you, that is a doctor, and you know that is 
that you need to give a feedback to or that needs to know how you progress in your treatment do you understand so you need such a um, record you might need such record or even if you are a if you are a learned person or you you also you are a, you are a health care provider maybe you're a doctor you're a nurse do you understand or you have your daughter your son as a doctor or as a nurse you know you might need anything that makes you to feel that okay you have you need your record your your medical record you can have access, you have the right, it's your right to be able to assess those records and in details and accurate. Do you, you understand? So you also there are times that when we get when we get to the hospital to treat one illness or the other, we have many options for, for that treatment, maybe surgery, medical, you know. You have the right to know all your you have the right to know the available service services help for that condition. So that is that about that point. That means the point is that you have the right to obtain your medical record. Another point is you have the right to informed consent. Yes, you have the right to informed consent. Um, informed, informed consent means that when taking your perm taking permission from you before we as healthcare providers do anything on you. Like I want to check your blood pressure. Mama, please, um, I would like to check your blood pressure. Can I go ahead? If you tell me no, I will hold on. But I'll try to, con um, to convince you. I'll, I'll try to explain to you the reason I want to check your blood pressure. If you still insist that I shouldn't do that, I'll keep I'll hold on, you know, and take other necessary actions that I'm supposed to take. So you you are to be informed. Even when an I, an unconscious patient is on the bed, we don't assume that that unconscious person is gone or you know, when we want to give such person maybe injection, my Mrs. Uh, Mr. A, Mr. B, I'm about to give you an injection, you know, just to prepare that person's mind to be aware. So we don't just um, we don't just take one I want a um, medical action on a patient. When that patient is not a log of wood, you didn't understand. So that patient, we we need to gain the patient's consent. Like in your treatment, maybe you maybe you need um uh, you need to pass through a surgery. You know we don't just take our decision and start taking it into the theater. <laughs> so we must inform you, and that is you have the that is what I'm talking what I'm saying about the right to informed consent. You have to give your consent to whatever action or to whatever care we want to give you as health care as health care provider and um. Another point, and that is why in the in one of the importance I made, I made mention uh, earlier that I know your bill of rights helps you to take to participate in the actions of you gaining back your health. Do you understand? When you are informed about everything that you have to do concerning your treatment and everything, you'll be active. In fact, you'll be monitoring. Okay, has this been done? Have, have they done this? You'll be able to know that yes. If, if there's any way you also might help, maybe you need to to um to walk. Do you understand to ambulate like to walk from one place to as a form of exercise to help your recovery? You know, once you have been informed prior to that time, you'll be able to participate. You'll be able to cooperate with the healthcare providers and uh, please don't mind my dogs. <laughs> They're just having their nice time. So that is where the point comes in. I hope you enjoyed this video. So let's move on to the right to transparency billing. Hmm. and full disclosure of any cost including recommended treatment plan as a patient you have the right to transparent billing if they give you a a, a sum up of a, let's say 100,000 as your bill that you're going to be paying for your treatment you have the right to know to know what okay the the 100,000 what is it what how has it been spent okay it should be analyzed these are the spent on medication these are the spent on procedures this has been spent on medical uh, laboratory tests do you understand so you have the right to have to know your full disclosure of any cost in, in your medical care then you have the right to privacy you have the right to privacy and confidentiality of medical record the right to privacy and confidentiality in medical record privacy and confidentiality in healthcare system is that your record is a secret whatever you have in your medical record is a secret between you between you as a patient and the health care provider do you understand so your medical record must be must be kept in in, in in a private in private and it must be and that is also what we mean by confidentiality it must not be, be disclosed so when you when you see when you notice any breach any breach in in that aspect maybe your you discover your medical record you know, is um the, the, the privacy and confidentiality has not been maintained, and um you know, in, in this aspect, you need to take <coughs> your actions. You need to take your legal action because your right has been um, tampered; it has been jeopardized. So you have the right to privacy and confidentiality of your medical record. Of your medical record, when you as a patient, even when you tell your your, your healthcare provider, this is my condition. And please do not tell, I don't want my husband to be aware, or I don't want my wife to be aware, or I don't want my mother to be aware, or my father. Yes, 
such confidence, such uh, such a uh, uh, record, medical record must be must be as you have said. But at times, in some conditions, the healthcare provider might um, try to convince you to make you know the importance of maybe informing your these people you've mentioned that they must not be aware of your condition just because of your own benefits. Do you understand? So there may be a kind of dialogue in this aspect, and uh, the both of you will reach um, an agreement. So we reach an agreement, or you and the healthcare facility will reach an agreement. So that is how it works. You, as a patient, have the right to clean, safe, and a secure healthcare environment. A clean, safe, and a secure healthcare environment. When you go to any healthcare facility that is not clean, that is not safe or secured, that means you are in the wrong place. Please go to the healthcare facility that will provide you a clean, a safe, and a secure environment. Not a, a healthcare facility that you get to and you'll be the one to, you know, to start cleaning up where you want to stay. You, you know, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense when you when you are in the hospital and maybe you just hear noise of patients running. <laughs> what happens to those that are not able to, to work, those that are bedridden? What happens to them? So your healthcare facility must be a clean place. It must be a safe and a secure place. Then you have the right to be treated with respect. Yes. <laughs> you have the right to be treated with a respect regardless of your gender regardless of your race religion ethnicity allegation of crime disability or economic circumstances even as a criminal we give respect to the criminal that needs our mm. mm. yeah as a as a criminal coming um receiving health care in a facility we must treat that person with respect you know we must treat the person with respect and um you know Regardless, we must treat that person with respect. And um, just everybody, every other person, either a child, a, an adult, you know, the teenager, you have the right to be treated with respect. Another point is you have the right to receive urgent, immediate, and sufficient intervention and care in the event of an emergency. When you are in a, in a, in a state of uh, in a situation like an emergency situation, you have the right to emergency care. You have the right to receive urgent and immediate care in, situ in emergency situations. Then you have the right to reasonable visitation. Reasonable visitation. Please let us know that. I know this area used to cause um, <laughs> it causes uh, arguments between the uh, between the patients and the patient's relative, which especially we nurses, <laughs> especially we nurses. You know, we always have issues with this aspect. So, when we're talking about your rights, please note that word. You have the right to reasonable visitation in accordance with prevailing rules and regulations. A re you have the right, to, let me repeat that aspect again. You have the right to a reasonable visitation in accordance with prevailing rules and regulations of that SK facility. If the rule of that, rules and regulation of that SK facility is, um, maybe visitation is between um, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., or the station is between 11 a.m. to 12 noon, you know, that is the regulation. So you must obey that aspect. You don't expect someone to come in by 9 a.m. to send he, he or she wants to come and visit you on the hospital bed. And the nurses will allow them in. You know, maybe we don't, we do not know the reason we, at times, we restrict movement of people into the um, hospital wards. Let me briefly tell you that. You know, at times, you, we, a patient may be in a very sensitive Word, medical word, or any surgery word, or any word whatsoever. Do you understand? And we, people coming from outside, that we don't know where they're coming from. Some people might have gone to do one thing or the other to work. You know, people will just be coming in. This person will come and visit patient A. Another person visits patient B, patient C. Different people in the world at the same time. And we, according to um, according to the knowledge we have, is that we we as human beings we carry microorganisms everywhere we go. Everywhere we go, so treating you in a ward, we, 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 we do try to call um, to control the microorganisms there to put them under control, and we will not expect people to come in and jump pack our ward and you know, moving microorganisms from one person to the other. Do you understand? You also, that you're on the bed, your life it has, is at stake. We expect you to maybe we even expect you to recover within one, one or two days, and in that, in that situation, your recovery may take so long. Do you understand? And also for your own security. You know, I, have, I, I, I made mention of, you know, you have the right to a clean, safe, and a secure healthcare facility. Yes, you have your right to, we, we need to, 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 to maintain your own safety too. Do you understand? We need to maintain your own safety. So we cannot just allow anybody to come in at any time. So when the right time, the set time for visitation, um, when, when, when it is that time, a uh, patient relative of whosoever has come to visit you would be allowed to come in. And still note that, 
the numbers of those who come into the world at a point in time will be um will be um, how would i how would i put it will be controlled yes will be controlled because you wouldn't want a lot of people in the world at the same time it is not okay it will not help you as a patient on the bed do you understand even when you, you have you just have a, a newborn baby and you are still in the healthcare facility we don't expect people to start coming in and you know then you know your child is still very fragile it's still you know the child is still is just starting to build his or her own immune, immune system immunity so we don't have we, we, we cannot just expose such baby to people from you know anywhere do you understand so that is the more reason we we we, we maintain we maintain and in addition, we always want our walls to be neat. <laughs> yes, we don't want any um, any distraction. Do you understand? We don't want any noise whatsoever. And it is because of you, our patient. <laughs> yes. So that is the reason we we don't allow people to just come into the world at just anyhow. So when when I say you have the right to visitation, a reasonable visitation in accordance with prevailing rules and regulation. Yeah, that is that about that. You also have the right to declare to decline care. Subject to prevailing laws and upon full disclosure of the consequences of such decision. This point means that you have the right to receive treatment. But before you receive, you, you, you give a right to receive, before you say you want to, um, so you have the right, you have the right to refuse treatment, but um, you must, you know, according to the law of that uh, facility, and we must have given you a full disclosure of the consequences of the actions you want to take. Maybe you as a pregnant woman, you are, your baby is already in distress, you also, and you are in labor, your baby is already in distress, you also, there's no indication for you to go for an emergency CS. And we give you the informed consent that, madam, or maybe we've even allowed you to see your, your medical report, the scan and everything, and we, we've, we've been able to tell you, to inform you that the next step that is safe for us now is to take you into the uh, theater for emergency CS. And you, dis uh, you, you decline. Maybe you we have to explain to you, madam, if you do not do this, it might, it might hurt your baby, it might hurt you, it, you know, we're well, not giving you all those informations, information, sorry, information, and you still feel that, no, oh, no, 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 in my, since, in, since my, my family members have been put in bed, they have no, they've been put in bed, they have no use knife to, they don't use knife to bring out, <laughs> you know, this is common to, with Nigerians, <laughs> yes, I'm making this video in Nigeria, this is, no, 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 they don't bring, um, we don't, we don't use knife to bring out the uh, baby from our, top, uh, from our womb, you know, <laughs> But we have been able to explain to you. We've been able to explain to you the consequences of, you know, if you go for the marriage to save it, to save your baby, you and your baby will go home. You'll be, you'll be fine. You'll be smiling. You should understand. So if you are refusing any form of treatment, make sure that you have, you are aware of the consequence of that decision you are taking. Be sure that you are aware of the consequences of the decisions you are taking, and you're ready. And you already you have a form to fill. If after all our interventions, if after all our information that we, we tried to convince you to take the right decision, and you are still insisting not to take the right decision, you have a form to fill. You have a form to fill, and the form will be given to you. Okay, maybe you even feel that you, are, you want to live like a patient that has been that has been on admission, and you want to discharge yourself uh, against the um, medical advice. You have a form to fill so that if anything happens, the, the hospital will not be put to blame. So another point is that you have the right to decline um, to participate, to decline your consent to participate in medical research, experimental procedure, or clinical trials. You know, there are times that we, we need you for a research purpose. There are times that we need you for experimental purpose. You have the right to decline. You have the right to refuse such. You understand. You have that right as a patient. Another right is that you have the right to quality care in accordance with the prevailing standard. When you are in any healthcare facility and you observe that your the type of care they're giving you there is not a quality one, based on all these things I've been able to put through to you, please take the necessary actions. Move, you can yes you can move that your patient or you decide to move to a, a more standard hospital to receive your SK and you know you will be fine then you have the right to complain and express satisfaction regarding the services received do you understand you have the right maybe your 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 one of your rights has been tampered has been jeopardized you know you have the right to report such acts and the necessary actions will be taken. We have that department in all healthcare facilities. So try to 
or make your inquiry and report to the right quarters. Instead of you arguing or fighting the health care provider, the nurses, the doctor, just make your report. It will, yes, it will be worked upon and necessary actions will be taken. Then you have the right, um, you have the right to be treated with respect. I have been able to say that. You have the right to make a treatment choice. You know, we, we we're going to give you all the options. Maybe we, that, that, that kind of condition has several um, options. So we're going to give you the, the treatment options. And you as a patient or a patient relative to a helpless patient can take that decision. You have the right to make your treatment choice. So as long as patient is considered to be in sound of sound mind, it is both his right and responsibility to know about all options available for treatment in his medical condition. Yes, and then make the choice he feels is right for him. The right is closely um, asso is closely associated with the right of informed consent, just as I've explained in the earlier um, right. So you also have the right to make decisions about end-of-life care, including life-preserving measures, such as the use of feeding tubes and of ventilators. You have the right to decide. Either you want a nasogastric to be the NG tube, you want to be fed with it, or you don't want. It's your right. But we will do our best to explain to you the reason you want it. But if you still say you do not want it, so may it be. So, um, so if you believe your patient's rights have been violated, you can discuss it with the hospital patient advocate or your state department of health. Stand up and exercise your patient rights. Yeah, we need to stand up. Yes, we need to stand up to exercise. A patient right. Anyone can be a patient at any point in time. Yeah. Anyone can be a patient at any point in time. I as a nurse can be a patient as I have been a patient before. And I can still be I can still be a patient at any point in time. Do you understand? I might, I might want to give birth to my babies, I might want to, do you understand? I might want to go for a general medical checkup, though at that time I'm regarded, I'm, re, I'm referred to be a client. But still, same right, I still have the right to all those things that I've mentioned earlier. So, this will bring us to... The end of today's video. I hope you all have learned one or two things um, as regards your patient's bill of rights. Yeah, this will take us. This will take us to the end of today's um let's talk. And I hope you have been able to learn one or two things as regards to this patient's bill. As regards your patient's bill of rights. Yes. So can you drop your view or opinion as regards this topic? And um. Your comments also try to drop that at the comment section below and uh, you can also drop your questions there as well thank you for watching this video can you your can you click on the box you are seeing on the screen to watch more of my videos and um they are all about living ld some it, some um, things you need to know about one condition or the other i've talked about hypertension diabetes deep breathing exercise how to cope with stress how to live a healthy lifestyle you know we have more and i also i've also dropped some videos on ld living like living ld like the things we eat like food parfait smoothie and all sorts all sorts so click on the boss and uh, it will take you to my other videos thank you for watching this video i really appreciate in fact if you have watched this video till this time i'm giving you a tumble thank you very much and i'll see you in my next video see you then live ld and stay safe bye